We bring you greetings from Shabbat Global Ministries, and we thank and praise God that you tuned in with us on tonight. At this time, we will bring to you our master teacher in the person of Apostle Jeremiah Cummings. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I am so excited about what you are doing that I'm hearing about. I'm hearing so many things about what you are doing, and we want to welcome to welcome you to our home. Uh, this broadcast is live on Facebook Live, and it's also live on ShabbatRadioNetwork.com. I get a lot of mail. I get a lot of greetings from people all over the world, and I want to read something that I got from Mary Ann, uh, Mary Ann uh, Kuzinski who sent something and posted it on the School of the Prophets. And if you have not been to the School of the Prophets, you need to go to the School of the Prophets University. Uh, I started it about three years ago, and it's really picking up. It's bigger than Shabbat Global Ministry as far as members. Um, but we need to get to Shabbat Global Ministry because we have that in Mississippi. I want to greet uh, our ambassador, Joanne uh, Thomas, down in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and also Deacon Steve Thomas in Jackson, Mississippi. And our intern minister, Michelle Folks, is down there now because our ministry was given a building by, by a lady from India. And so last night, uh, Minister Michelle left and, and took the train down to Jackson, Mississippi. And, uh, and they've been working all day, uh, meeting with the secretaries of state and people like that to see exactly how we're going to use this building in Jackson, Mississippi for ministry. A lot of the brothers that I've taught in Dallas uh, when I was a minister in the Nation of Islam are beginning to tune in and beginning to make contributions. You know, I, I mean, one thing about the truth, the truth does not have religious barriers. You know, uh, the truth when it is spoken and when it is taught as Jesus did, you know, it was, to, it was to go into all nations and teach all nations. Uh, he said, go into all the world and teach all nations. So it's not limited. Uh, what denomination has done, denomination has made religion very limited. And as I told you, the root word of religion is returning back to bondage. The re in there is return. So it's returning back to bondage. We're not a religion. No, we're a kingdom. We're a nation. Amen. And that's what we're building. We're building the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And we're doing it um, because that's what the Word told us to do. Marianne Kuzinski, she wrote this on the School of the Prophets University. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm going to read this because I kind of identify with what she's saying in this new year. I mean, and Happy New Year to all of you. Baraka New Year to all of you. It says, let's love each other as friends and human beings who are all who are of all faith. Now listen to me. This is Mary Ann. Let's love each other as friends, as human beings, who are all of us of different faith. You know, we all have different, and we all have different, now, different nationalities, and we all have different colors, but she's saying let us love each other as friends and human beings. All right? Not based on what you call yourself, not based on your title, not based on your religion, but let's respect each other as human beings, and let's love one another. I love that. I said, if God ever had a religion, it would be called love. Amen. He said, God is love. And by this shall men know that you are my disciples because you love one another. And the greatest of all of the commandments is that you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So if God had a religion, I mean, if he had a faith, let me say that, it would be love. Amen. He, she says, we are all the same unless we choose to hate. You know what I mean? Come on. We're all the same unless we choose to hate. Please let's bring into this new year, 2019, renewed strength, love, and unity. We are all gorgeous inside and out. After all, God made us that way in his image and in his likeness, joy. I thought that was so profound. Because she's talking about, you know, crossing over denominations, crossing over religious faith, you know, and just love and respecting and, and, and uh, loving each other as the creation of God. And I thought that was very profound. And I told Mary Ann, I said, I got to read that because it really touched my heart. Because I don't know, I, I may never mention, mention it to you, but we have with us uh, out of Dallas, Texas, Brother uh, Yahshua Abdul Kareem Muhammad. And he was with me, he was my captain 
when I was in the Nation of Islam as, as his minister. But, um, but he's been watching the broadcast. You know, Rahima, and these are people that I gave names to. Rahima Muhammad, they've been watching the broadcast. Because it's not based on religion. It's based on facts. It's based on truth. And one thing that people can, nobody can fight truth. Amen. Truth can, uh, will, will win every time. So if I teach the truth, and if I teach the word of God the way that even uh, Muslims and Buddhists and, you know, India, people from India, a lady from India gave our ministry a building in Jackson, Mississippi. And that's why Minister Michelle is down there with the ambassador, Joe Thomas, because they're looking, they're going through the building and making a report back to us, taking pictures of the building. And, you know, and God is just awesome. I talked about the year of kingdom expansion. You know, but this is your year of kingdom expansion, and it is a time, it is a time when the vision will come to pass, the vision and the dreams. As a matter of fact, I titled this, The, the Fulfillment of Our Dreams in 2019. Amen. You need to say, this is the fulfillment of my dreams in 2019. You know, Daniel writes in the book of, in the book of Daniel that the dream is certain and the, and the interpretation is sure. The key, now listen to me, the key to fulfilling your dream is to forget about the past. It's in the Bible. If you forget the past. You know, I like the temptation. They say, keep on walking, don't look back. You know, you can't keep looking back and go forward. You can't re keep reflecting on the past and look forward. It says in the book of Isaiah, now this is a foundational scripture that I want to deal with tonight. I want to deal with a few things tonight that's going to really open your eyes. So stay with me. Call a friend. Amen. And all of you who have been watching and telling people, and Ambassador Zelman Bowen just left here going back to Toronto, Canada. I think she's been here about five times already uh, last year or more. But um, in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, Isaiah 43, in the New International Version, listen to, the, listen to what God says. He said, forget the former things. He said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. It's in the Bible, in our B version. Look what he said. Don't dwell on the past. Because every time you dwell on the past, you're resurrecting it. Amen. You had bad experiences in the past, don't resurrect it. You know, some, I mean, some, some man walked out on you, don't resurrect it. Forget it. You know, Bishop Jakes told me, he said, if they walk out, let them go. You know, he said, if they go, let them go. You know, he said, he said, Bishop Jakes told me that he had an anointing to say goodbye. You know, and so, so this lines up with Isaiah 43, 18. He said, forget the former things, do not dwell in the past. God says, I'm doing a new thing. He said, about, God said, I'm going to do something new in a new year. I, we're not going to repeat 2018. We can't, it's past. And so God is saying, do not dwell on the past. Forget it. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Now, now it springs up. I wrote in my notes, when faith becomes now, faith works. Amen. The Bible says, now faith is. And many times people tell you, well, you got to wait a year or you got to wait two years. You know, no, you ain't got to wait. You got a thousand year, you know, then it's going to be all right. No, forget that. When faith becomes now, that's when the manifestation of your dream happens. You got to begin to demand it now. I keep quoting from uh, Job 22 and 28. You will also decree a thing, and the thing that you decree will be established upon your ways. Come on. And the favor of God, light will shine upon you. So when faith becomes now, See, faith is always now. Faith ain't next week. Faith ain't next year. Faith is now. I am Baraka, blessed now. Can I get amen? God is revealing things to us now for now. So he said, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do a new thing. He said, do not dwell on the past. I don't want to hear nothing about the past. I'm too busy looking at my future. And you should be too busy looking at your future. And, not, and forget about your past. Sure. Yeah, there were some stumbling blocks. There was some, there all kinds of stuff happened in your past. It's a part of the process of getting to where God wants to take you. Good and bad. Come on. He says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. 
I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Listen to this. Promise. I am making a way in the wilderness. God says, I'm opening up doors of opportunities where it don't seem like there's a door. He said, and streams in the wasteland. God is saying, when he says, when God says, uh, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, God said, I'm opening doors of opportunity and favor for you. That's what, in this new year, God is going to open up doors and opportunity for you. And I, I wanted to get to this tonight, but your, what your part is, once you read this, you got to have a spirit of expectancy. You got to expect, like a woman pregnant, my daughter just had a, just had a beautiful son down in Alabama, Nina, you know, but I saw her when she was, you know, expecting, you know, and, and at some point, the manifestation of that baby happened, all right? So you have to have the spirit of expectancy. And when God says, I'm doing a new thing, now shall it spring forth, God said, I'm making a way in the wilderness. God is saying, I'm opening doors of opportunity and favor for you. This is what the Lord said. He said, I'm sending strangers to show you favor. It ain't going to be, many times, it ain't going to be your family members. Many times, it's not going to be your best friend. Come on. <coughs> God says, I'm sending strangers to show you favor. And that's what he means by I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in waste places. I'm going to send strangers to show you favor. They will use their time. They will use their money. They will use their influence to broaden your territory. Here's a lady from India in Jackson, Mississippi. I never met her. But she met our ambassador down there, Joanne Thomas, and gave her a building. People don't give you buildings. And she's from India. I mean, she's a stranger. You know, but she's giving our ministry a building. You know, I was talking to uh, Brother um, um, Yeshua Abdul Kareem Muhammad, and he's giving us a $350,000 home for the Shabbat Voice of Triumph television satellite network in Texas. I mean, he, he said, look, you know, I just bought it. And I'm gonna, now, this is, this is a brother who studied under me some 25 years ago, who been following the broadcast. Now he opens up and say, I just got this $350,000 building, you know, and you can use it for the Shabbat Voice of Triumph satellite. I know what you're doing. He was with me when I was in Dallas. Yeah, man. He saw me work Dallas. He saw me bring Dick Gregory to Dallas. He saw us uh, open up a bookstore, the House of Knowledge, and a restaurant called Just For Your Health. We were moving and shaking back then. And so he's been watching me now and, uh, and called me and my son Jerry Cummings, uh, is ha who owns Cummings Trucking, an 18 wheeler found out that there were 18 wheelers available and he hooking all of that up. So we're not building a church. No, no, no. We're building the kingdom of God, a nation of people that are governed by God, governed by God's word, standing on God's 7,000 promises and all of them are yes. All the promises of God is yes and amen. Not one of them is no. And so that's what we're building. Let me, let me tell you something. This is what I want to tell somebody that's watching me tonight. The vehicle, I'm going to say that again. The vehicle you dreamed of, somebody else is going to buy it for you. Ah, I know you're about to shout on that one. Amen. God going to send strangers. Amen. I mean, they, they, some of them are, are, are covenant enforcement agents you know, clothed as human beings, but uh, the, the Hebrew word is Asiel, the angel of blessing. Asiel is, is part of my Hebrew middle name. Asiel, the angels of blessing. And, and so God is going to send people this year, 2019, into your life. There's some things that you've been trying to, that you dreamed of. Somebody go step up to the plate and say, you know what? I, I got it. Don't even worry about it. It's paid for. You can, you can get in it, drive. Amen. And I'm going to say it again. The vehicle you dreamed of, somebody else is going to buy it for you. I got that from God. I didn't make that up. 
See, what we don't understand, and so God has said, drop your past, don't look back, keep on walking by faith, and don't look back. He said, don't dwell on the past. I ain't got time to look back. My head is too busy looking at this and looking at that and, and envisioning this and, and, and writing this. You know, don't worry about, don't forget, last year passed, gone. Don't resurrect it into 2019. Leave it behind. Amen. I told you, I love the temptations. They were good friends of mine. You know, Otis Williams is still a good friend of mine. I just, we just saw him in, I think, in August or September out in Wisconsin. Keep on walking. Don't look back. All right? Now, so what scholars have done and what the devil has done, he has attempted to change the time and the set time of your blessing that is written of in the Bible. I'm going I'm to deal with this. You know, like you say, well, it ain't time yet. It is time. Now faith is. When faith becomes, now is time. I'm going to say that again. When faith, because the Bible says, now faith is. Amen. We, we want to greet uh, Prophet Daryl Johnson and, and Prophetess Andrea Johnson of Now Faith Is World Outreach in Dallas, Texas. But when faith becomes now faith, it's time. Your faith has to line up with now. Amen. Don't, God said, drop the past. Don't keep looking back. Keep walking by faith. Amen. And the devil will tell you, you ain't ready for that yet. Uh-uh. You are ready when faith becomes now. Now faith is. I'm not waiting. Don't have to. Amen. Because I can decree things now. Amen. And they will be established because I do that by faith. Now, in Psalms 102, I told you years ago, you got to get this. I want you to listen to this. In Psalms 102, verse number 13, King James Version. Prophecy, a prophetic promise. Listen to this. You will arise and have mercy upon your people for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is come. This is in Old Testament, Psalms 102 and verse, uh, verse number 13. He said, you will arise and have mercy upon your people. The word Zion means my chosen people in Hebrew. He said, for the time to favor her, yeah, the set time is come. Now what the devil did... He don't want you to understand that this scripture is speaking directly to us in this time. So what the devil attempted to do was to change the set time and the laws of faith. And it's in the Bible. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to show it to you tonight. Because he'll keep telling you it's not time. It is time. Because the book of Psalms says the set time is come. It didn't say that the set time is coming. But the set time that God wants to favor you. Come on, it's based on you making faith now. When faith becomes now, the manifestation of faith happens. Amen and amen. With, before, let me go back. Let me give you a little bit of history. I had a group in high school called the Internationals. Actually, we were called the Sounds of Love back then. You know, and I heard about Harold Melvin Enterprises, you know. And so, you know what I did? I, I, I never met Harold Melvin, but I was going to go downtown and get dressed up, and my determination was, I'm going to meet Harold Melvin. Just so happens, when I got down there, his MC jumped out of a car, and he looked at me, he said, you sing? I said, yeah. He, I said, I have a group. He said, uh, well, Harold got Harold Melvin Enterprise, and he's looking for a group. And so I said, well, I'd like to meet him. And Harold jumped out of a cab. I never forget, he had on this mink jacket. You know, and he looked at me, he said, hey, baby, how you doing? You know, and, and so George told me, he said, this guy sings, man, he got a group. He said, what you sing? I said, I sing anything. Now, I was determined, I knew that I knew where I wanted to go, even as an 18, 19 year old. I wanted to be with Philadelphia International, Philadelphia International Records. I wanted to be with Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. I wanted to be with, with an arranger named Tom Bell. I knew where I wanted to go when I was 18. And so I made an effort, and I was expecting to meet Harold Melvin, and Harold jumped out of a car. I, well, watch this. I ended up auditioning for Harold. 
I sang a song that reminded him of somebody for 20 years ago. He signed my group. And a year later, I ended up in the Blue Notes. Amen. Because I knew where I wanted to go. Amen. Now, I didn't have the faith that I have now, but you got the faith. You can decree where you want to go. You can have the spirit of expectation and you will get there. When your faith becomes now, the manifestation of that faith happens. Amen. So, go back to Psalms 102 and verse number 13. You will arise and have mercy upon your people for the time to favor her. We're talking about favor here. That's when somebody, somebody, the time God's favor, he sends people into your life to bless you. Amen. With their money. Oh, y'all don't hear me. With their influence. Come on. And their time. They take up. You'll be, you'll be wondering, why are you doing all this for me? Because of God's favor. Because God promised you favor. Amen. So you're going to meet people, strangers, that are, and don't be running from them. Because many, they're coming to bless you. They're going to use their time. They're going to use their influence. They're going to use their money. Come on. And some of you, the car that you're dreaming of, somebody else is going to buy it for you. And they're going to say, I'm going to tell you what they're going to say. The Lord told me to buy this for you. Or the Lord told me to get this to you. It happens to me. And it's happened to me time and time again. And it'll happen for you when your faith becomes now. Amen. Amen. So, Psalms 102.13, he says, He will have mercy upon his people for the time to favor her, that's you, the bride. Yea, the set time, the Bible said the set time is come. And you have to say, my, my set time is here. Amen. My set time has come. Amen. The time of God's favor is upon my life. You got to say it like you, you got to say it until you see it. I don't know what to tell you. You got to say it until you see it. You got to say, my set time has come. Amen. It's time for me to flourish. Amen. It, it, the 2019 is my year of fulfilled dreams. You got to say it. Can I get amen? Now, what the devil did, I'm going to show you Daniel 7.25. What the devil did, he attempted to change your set time of God's favor. It's in the Bible, if you enjoy the page out. In Daniel chapter number 7, verse number 25, it says, He will speak against the Most High. He Who will speak against the Most High? The devil. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people. He'll, he'll oppress them by telling them they ain't good enough to receive it. They got too many sins. You know, they backslidden. You know, they ain't no good. This devil is a liar. And Jesus is the Messiah. All right, so watch this. He said, he will speak against the Most High and oppress the holy people and try to change the set time and the laws of faith. This devil been trying to change, telling you, you got to wait. Amen. I'm on the scripture I read about it. They that wait upon the, uh, upon the Lord shall be renewed in strength. They will mount up with wings as an eagle. They ain't standing still. Amen. So look, I want you to get this because I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And all of this is about forgetting the past and not looking back. And that's one of the reasons why you ain't seen this scripture. I'm giving, dropping it on you tonight. He said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. I ain't got time to dwell on the past. I don't have time. I don't, I don't want to hear about the past. Uh-uh. Forget the past. I'm, I'm into my future. And you are into your future. You're not in your past. And anybody with my mama, boy, you better not bring up the past to my mama. She cut you. <laughs> don't you bring up the past. My mother, Hattie Mae Cummins, boy, you better not throw the past up in her face. Some stuff that happened last year or two years ago or ten years ago, she cut you. But I'm telling you, she's from Georgia, you know, and she cut you in a minute. Amen. I don't want to hear about the past. You know, don't, don't bring me nothing that happened last year, two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. No, you don't want to hear about nothing. Do you, you remember when? No, I don't. I'm too busy looking into, because faith is looking into the future. I got to say, I taught it ten years ago. Faith is having the ability to look into the future, not the past. Faith is the ability to look into the future and one day meet the future and shake future's hand. 
I'm looking forward to shaking the future's hand. So the scripture said, forget the former things, do not dwell in the past. God said, I'm doing something new. I'm doing a new thing. He said, I'm making a way in the wilderness. He says, I'm opening doors of opportunity and favor for you in 2019. And the fulfillment of your dreams are happening in 2019. Amen. And they begin to happen when faith becomes now. Oh, my God. He said, don't dwell in the past. And this devil, I can't stand him. This devil tried to change my set time. I was set 10 years ago. And he threw a wrench at me. And tripped me, I'm telling you, but I'm back. Come to tell him I'm back and it's now his time has expired. Amen. You got to throw the past behind you and look into the future and be determined and expect to meet your future face to face. And people, God is going to send angels, ACL, ACL, the angels of blessing, A-S-I-E-L, ACL. I, -E I, I used to know all the angels. All the angels named by heart, including Raphael and Gabriel and Mikael. Amen. You call him Michael, but his name is Mikael. Are you listening to me? So <laughs> I'm excited. I know. Listen, <laughs> the prophecy of David, he was a prophet. David was prophet and king, priest and king. You and I are kings and priests unto God. And we will dwell on this earth. And we will reign on this earth. I mean, you look at Revelation and people tell you, well, that ain't happened yet. It happened before. There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. We are kings and priests. If Revelation 5 and 10 said he has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on this earth. And this devil trying to tell you, you can reign when you go to heaven. Where's heaven at? Wherever God is. Well, where God is in me. In him we live and move and have our being. Well, where is heaven? Wherever God is. Where is hell? Wherever the devil is. Amen. So where is heaven? Heaven is in me. God is in me. He said, I will dwell in them. 2 Corinthians 6.16. I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. They will be my people and I will be their God. Where is God? He lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Where does he live at? He lives in me. Well, why do you say that? Because he said in his Bible that my body is the temple of the living God. And he said he will dwell in me. He will walk in me. And this devil is telling you, wait till you die. You go to heaven, walks on streets of gold. Streets of gold is an allegory of the divine nature. We obtain the divine nature while we're here on earth. Yeah, the Bible tells us that. That he has given us exceeding great and precious promises, but that by them we may become partakers of the divine nature. It's in the Bible if you're the page out. I'm so sick of this devil. I'm so sick of religion. I'm so sick of people. I mean, you know, that they, they don't want to grow. They don't want to think. They, want, they don't want to be like, they don't want to be like God. When he made us to be like him, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Come on, and we want to be like Mike, or we want to be like some, some, some movie star, or I remember when Superfly came out, everybody had a Superfly coat and a Superfly wig, come on, and platform shoes, and they walking down the street like they were Ron O'Neill, hairdo, yeah. down here, Scary you know, dude. they want to be Shaft, <laughs> you know, come on, I want to be God. I want to be so much like God that when you see me, you see him. And when you hear me, you hear him. That should be your aim, to be like God. He made you in his image, after his likeness, and gave you Baraka blessings. And then told you to have dominion. Christ came to give us back that dominion. The Messiah came to give us back what Adam lost. So he says in Luke 10, 19, I give you power. Well, what kind of power is it? It is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So if you have knowledge, you can't be destroyed. If you have knowledge, you can say what I say. Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I mean it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that runs their mouth against me is condemned already. 
The blessing of Abraham is on my life. The blessing of Abraham is on your life. If anybody say anything about you, they're the ones who are going to suffer for that. They better keep their mouth off of you. I'm just talking. <laughs> Amen. So this devil, who don't know anything about time, tried to change the set time of God's favor. It's in the book of Daniel, chapter number 7, verse number 25, in the NIV version. He will speak against the Most High. He will, be, he will work against God. You'll be telling people what you're getting ready to do and where you're going, and they'll be telling people you ain't going nowhere. He, they ain't speaking against you or me. They're speaking against God. If God give us a revelation and say we're getting ready to do something, and somebody say, well, it ain't happened yet, that, he ain't talking to them. He's talking to us. Amen. And hit people giving us buildings and $350,000 new homes down in Dallas. They, God is opening up a, 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 a way in the wilderness. Yes, he is. Yeah, I want to say this. I know, Sister Brenda, you may not want me to say it. You know, but we got, let me say this. Well, let me talk, let me talk about other people. Because we have people who watch us every Thursday. They on a fixed income. They're on a fixed income. And I mean, and they make sacrifices, you know, because we want this camera. We did add some more lighting. I hope y'all can see me better. We did order some more lighting because we're getting ready to get the camera now. But um, but they give. I mean, like I was blown away that somebody's on a fixed income going to give $100? Come on. That is amazing to me. I was blown away because we're going somewhere. You know, Look, this work here, that you're looking at is good ground. It's good soil. When you sow into this, you can expect a hundredfold return or thousandfold return. Ask some of the people that do it. Amen. They so blessed. I mean, they so blessed, beloved. They so happy. They so full of joy. Amen. And I'm saying this. This devil in Daniel 7.25 spoke against what God said and oppressed the people. He could oppress the people because the people listened to what he said. Amen. He oppressed his holy people and tried to change the set time. Now remember in Psalms 102.13, David wrote that for the set time of God's favor had is come. And the devil tried to change it. He tried to change it. Anybody that's bringing you a negative report, leave it alone. There's, there's 7,000 promises in the Bible. That's what you need to learn. That you can have faith that's the size of a grain of mustard seed. Not even a mustard seed. The faith that's the size of a grain of mustard seed. And you can speak to the mountain. That means the block that's keeping you from seeing your reality. You got to cast it out. Some of y'all need to cast out some of the thoughts that come up in your own head. You need to condemn those thoughts. Amen. Because we don't wrestle against flesh, flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and power and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. You know, you got spiritual wickedness that creep up in the church. Yeah. I mean, and so our job is to cast it down, forget it, forget about the past, move forward, look into the future, and shake hands with your future. You can start shaking hands now. Because it's, it, everything is coming your way right now as I speak this word. Listen to, listen to uh, the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3, 13, when he says he forgetting the past. He said, brethren, I cut not myself to have apprehended, apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting I ain't got time to go backwards. Forgetting those things, people that don't want to go nowhere, leave them. Amen. They don't want to walk with you, leave them. Have the anointing to say bye and keep on walking and don't look back. I know I'm talking to somebody. Somebody got this. Don't dwell. If people don't want to be with you, let them go. That goes for a man, a woman, whoever it is. They don't want to be with you, let them go. They don't want to believe with you, let them go. They don't want to walk with you, let them go. They don't want to talk with you, let them go. You don't need them. All you need is God. And God will give you people who will love you, who will show you favor, who will open up doors. 
that no man nowhere can close. He'll send ACL, the angel of blessings, your way. Somebody say ACL, the angel of blessing. I'm telling you, beloved, it's a new day. This ain't the old, this ain't 2018. This is a new day. My God. He says in Philippians 4, in Philippians 3.13, the apostle, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind last year, bad experiences with things, and reaching forth unto those things which are before me by faith. I'm going after stuff that's in front of me. I press, he says in verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. God was taking Noah to a new level. And when God uh, is taking you to, a, to the next level of success, you can't look back at those who refuse to move with God's flow. Let it go. Amen and amen. Let them go. I'm going to say it again. I wrote it down as the Spirit gave it to me. God was taking Noah to a new level. And when God is taking you to the next level of success, you can't look back at those who refuse to move with the flow of God. Amen. The reason why you're moving is because you're blessed. You're Baraka. You're blessed. And the blessing of the Lord brings wealth. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth. I'm blessed. I am Baraka. I am blessed. And the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. You know I'm fired up? I'm fired up because we have decreed a 30-day fast from January the 1st to January the 3rd, 2019 on liquids only to seal the Baraka revelation to everyone. Our inevitable financial security is to further establish the kingdom of our God in his Christ on earth as it is in heaven. To establish independent school education. Purchase 18 willows to ship goods and services nationwide, including in Canada. Y'all all right? So they tell you that when Revelation 11 and 15 says the kingdoms of this world are to become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ and he will reign forever and ever, they tell you that's coming. When Christ is here, how you know he's here? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if he never leaves me, he's here. He's like the air you breathe. You don't see it, but it's in front of your face. Because if it wasn't there, you wouldn't be alive. Jesus is alive. His spirit dwells in us. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And nothing is impossible that we want, that we want to attain, that we want to do in his name. Nothing is impossible. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the devil has been driven out of the light into darkness already. In Job 18 and 18, Job 18 and 18, it said, He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He ain't in my world. I'll, if he shows up, I'll pay him no mind. Amen. Let me tell y'all what's the loudest of all sound. The loudest of all sound is silence. Silence is louder than sound. Sometimes you just need to be quiet and let the devil raise all the hell he want to raise and don't say nothing. Just be quiet. You know, hum a song. Go say a prayer. You know, you ain't got time to be arguing with nobody. Amen. I mean, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no arguing in the kingdom of God. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Amen. You need to start decreeing things. I got a book called, um, I mean, I wrote it, what, three or four years ago? The Two Covenants. I'm going to sell one million copies in 2019. I decree that. Amen and amen. You know why? We need the money to build and establish the kingdom of God. Amen. We don't need to be struggling. Amen. The Bible didn't say we're supposed to struggle. The Bible says this. In Proverbs 10.22, we don't have no business struggling if we decree the blessing of God over our life. It said the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. NIV version, Proverbs 10.22. Uh-uh. 
I ain't never been about money. I never did anything for money. I didn't sing with Harold Melvin and the Brunos for money. I sang because I love singing. I sang because I love music. And money just happened to come with it. Amen. As a matter of fact, still coming. And I praise God for that. It's still coming. Stuff I did 45 years ago with digital, mm, I love it. I love the digital music that's being played on Spotify and, and YouTube and, and, and iTunes and Amazon. I'm going to tell you something. This is 2019, the year of your fulfilled dreams. The year that God is going to fulfill your dreams. Keep on, dream big, y'all. We serve a big God. Dream big. And you are the people, and I, and I am the people that once walked in darkness at Isaiah 9 and 2. Isaiah 9 and 2 in the Amplified Version said, The people who walk in spiritual darkness will see a great light. We see the light is on. You can't sleep. Some people can sleep with the light on. I can't sleep with the light on. Turn the light out. But Isaiah 9 and 2 said, The people who walked in spiritual darkness will see a great light. Those who live in the dark land, the light will shine upon them. And Isaiah 60, Isaiah chapter 6 said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And even though gross darkness shall cover the earth, but his light shall be seen upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. We're in that time. Because faith has become now a vision whose time has come. The fulfillment of our dreams in 2019. Don't you let the devil change time on you like he did in Daniel uh, 725. He sought to change the set time in the favor of God the, and the laws of God. He'll tell you, you know, it ain't going to happen. He'll tell you, you need to wait another year. He'll tell you, uh-uh. When faith becomes now, faith is. And the manifestation happens. We're going to be changing now our radio network address. We're going to be changing it. And it's going to be real simple. I think it's going to be up tomorrow. You know, right now it's still ShabbatRadioNetwork.com. But I think by tomorrow it'll be Shabbat Radio one the number one. ShabbatRadio1.com. That's going to be our new address. But in the meantime, you can go to ShabbatRadioNetwork.com. We're establishing the kingdom of God. You know, this building that was just given to us by some people from India down in Jackson, Mississippi. And we got Minister Michelle, our intern minister down there. She's down there with Ambassador Joe Thomas and Deacon Steve Thomas. They're down there taking care of business and taking pictures. They're going to be sending us pictures tonight. But we, got, we may have to do some work on it. So everything that we're doing, and when we ask you to sow into what we're doing... We're looking at the future, and we're looking at building for the people in the future and putting things there. We want our own satellite network. I'm tired. Look, I ain't begging nobody to be on their TV show. No, we build our own. I've been in TV 50 years. I've been doing music and TV 50 years. I don't need to be. I don't need to beg nobody. First of all, I don't need to beg nobody to be on their TV, TV show or their TV station. We can go satellite ourselves. Amen. My wife heard a word from God two or three years ago. Cyber. And, and pa Dr. Paul Krauss heard uh, heard a word uh, some 35, 40 years ago. Satellite. And so all you need to hear is a word and catch the vision. So when you sow into us, when you sow into Shabbat Global Ministries, when you sow, when you go to ShabbatRadioNetwork.com and donate to this ministry, we don't touch it. It goes straight to the ministry. It's a 501c3, and we take it and we work with it. We ordered new lights today. They came today. I, we should have a better picture today. Amen. I moved out my office, you know, that little corner that I had, and I moved into the living room. Amen. It, it looks like a studio. Amen. So, look. Tell the world that Apostle Jeremiah Cummings ain't playing. And, and like, I, like I wanted to tell you, and when I was in Arlington, Texas, and, and they would tell you in Arlington, I was the only minister that had half the church of Christians and half the church of Muslims 
and nobody argued, nobody fussed, and I taught from the Bible. And they loved it. And we have Muslims, and we have Christians, we have agnostics. You know, I, I even baptized an atheist down in South Carolina one year. Man didn't even believe in God. Amen. I opened a conference in Dallas in 2010 with former terrorists from the Middle East. I opened it. You know, so it's time that we bring the people together, as Sister Mary Ann said. She said, look, she said, let's love each other as friends and human beings who are all, who are of all faith. Let's love them. And nationalities and color. Let's love them. We are all the same unless we choose to hate. We ain't got time for hate. Hate ain't God. Love. God is love. And that's what we're going to teach. We're going to love them. We're going to love the atheists. Amen. And show them Jesus in us. Amen. We're going to love the Muslims. I came out of the nation of Islam. And I'm telling you, when I came into the church, they tried to get me to curse Minister Farrakhan, tried to get me to curse the nation. I said, how can I curse the womb that birthed me to here? No. And you better not curse him. And you better not curse the nation. I was born from that. And the reason why I am as disciplined as I am today is because I was taught by a man who never lied to me for 10 years, never told me one lie. I was in the church one day. They were all lying. Now, <laughs> I know some of y'all don't like what I just said. It's the truth. So we want you to stand with us. The Muslims are standing with us. The Christians are standing with us. Even some haters are standing with us, you know, but it's okay, you know, because they will eventually see that it's real. What we're doing is real. What we're saying is real. Shabbat Radio Network dot com. Donate. <laughs> like lady on a fixed income gave a hundred dollars last week on a fixed income because I said something that she said I said something that struck a nerve. And she, and she made a sacrifice. And I, if somebody on a fixed income can do that, somebody that's got a job and got money coming in, they can go to ShabbatRadioNetwork.com and they can donate. We'll take that money. Amen. Um, Deacon Thomas may need money for that building down that the India, a lady from India gave to us, you know, uh, in Dallas. You know, the, the, we got a building there, you know, that's being uh, given to us for use for the satellite voice. The, the Shabbat Voice of Triumph Satellite Network. We're going to build it. And we ain't begging nobody. We ain't, we ain't even got to beg God for nothing. Amen. We can ask and have faith and watch it happen. I am Apostle Jeremiah Cummins. My lovely wife is up and she's feeling a, a, about 90% better now. We plan to be at Shabbat Global Ministries on this Sunday coming live to you at 12 noon Central Standard Time. You know, and remember now, I think by tomorrow, it'll be ShabbatRadio1.com. ShabbatRadio1.com. We're going to send posters out, and uh, we want to say we love you. And as I was coming from Toronto, Canada, you know, God said, Yahweh Abaya Baraka. And I said, whoa, and everything began to shift. Yahweh Abaya Baraka. We love you. God bless you. Share this broadcast with a friend, with a family, and look at it again, and write the scriptures down, and God is going to do something special in your life. Good night. We love you. Good night.